So in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about gas cooking whilst you're camping. Uh, and I'll just talk about what's worked for us, what we've tried um, and where we are now with it. So like many people when you start off you're not really sure, you don't really want to invest a lot of money. Um, so one of these really small devices is perfect. Um, we're a family of four. Uh, we bought one of these and actually used it for a whole year. And it absolutely does the trick. It's light, fits in the back of a car. So we literally just went camping in the car, fit it in the back of the car. It runs on these gas canisters, which you can buy for a few dollars. Um, and literally, you just um, replace the gas canister when it runs out. Uh, you've got one burner. That's really it. It's basic as that. Um, pros and cons of this. Well, the pros are definitely that it's light. It's easy. You chuck it in the back of a car in a small space. It doesn't take up room. Uh, it does the job. And as I said, we're a family of four and we would cook meals on it and we would do everything on it. The cons. Um, so one of the things we found was because it's only one burner, uh, obviously you're cooking a meal and we tend to cook meals in the evening when we're camping. Uh, I found it quite hard because you had to cook one thing at a time, put it aside. So that was a bit of an issue. Wind as well. Um, you need some sort of wind deflector around it. We found that the wind uh, became a bit of an issue, um, but that was okay. We found ways around it. And then gas canisters. So for us, we reckon that they used to last about a day and a half uh, on average um, for us. And as I said, we would use it quite a lot. So we would cook stuff and do stuff. So, um, you know, you've certainly got to have a car full of these 220 grams of uh, of gas and butane gas in here and i'll talk about gas volumes in a minute when you get to bigger uh, units because it's difficult to work out how much you need so but we did definitely i reckon about as i said day and a half of this anyway that's the cheap and cheerful uh, option uh, i have to recommend that for anybody starting out but then at some point you're going to want to upgrade so then as i said we upgraded to a two burner stove and this is the Coleman Hyperflame Cadet. Uh, two burners, uh, as you can see. Uh, and the only the other reason why we chose this one with the two burners was it has this wind deflecting or wind protection for the burners. And that's, that's been pretty effective, so I've been very happy with that. Uh, it's certainly, they do a couple of options with the Hyperflame. We went for this one it's been it's been good uh, from a burner size it's been very good you get a couple of options uh, for gas so uh, it comes with a gas hose 3 8 inch uh, bottle connector for uh, your BSP for your gas bottle um, so uh, and then this connects actually directly to the device itself so you, you fix this end in and one of the things I would say is just be careful you don't lose that washer because uh, we find that when you take it off sometimes it starts coming loose so we just take something over the end of it when we take it off anyway so that goes on there and then you put the gas hose into here like that and away you go and then obviously the other end connects to your gas bottle which have it underneath. The other option with this is you can buy the smaller gas bottles rather than the large, larger ones. Um, these uh, little green ones, um, and we keep these mainly as an emergency supply. So these particular ones are the, uh, the propane refills um, for the for the units. So they're not refillable, but uh, um, you can buy these separately. We keep one of these actually as a spare, just for emergency cases. And you can see, yeah, it's been running around the car for a while because the paper's uh, starting to get uh, pretty well worn out. Uh, so this is basically just an emergency for us. We don't use that most of the time. We prefer to use a full gas bottle. I've got a couple of different options. This is a three kilo gas bottle, and I'll talk about gas consumption in a minute. So pros and cons of this particular unit. Um, look, it's obviously a lot bigger than the, the single unit I showed you at the beginning, so it takes up more space, it's heavier, but the advantages are that it's obviously got the two burners and you can connect it to a full gas bottle, so you don't have to keep going through cans all the time and changing it over. The, the biggest negative of this device, and you'll see on the internet of the Hyper Flames, is the 
challenge you have with turning the flame really low. So the problem with this is that once it's lit, it's, it's really strong and intense uh, and it's really hard to turn it down. There is, a, there is a trick on the internet, it works really well. Basically you pull the knobs off, uh, there's a nut behind there, so obviously disconnect the gas first, sorry, no gas in there please. Uh, disconnect them, pull the knob off, very carefully ease it forward, get something behind it, you don't want to break it. Uh, so just gently prise it forward. Uh, once the knob is off, there's a nut there, undo that nut uh, with a pair of pliers probably. Uh, and then you can pull out the valve stem, uh, unscrew the valve stem, take it out, wipe it with a bit of tissue. Now, there are some people talking about putting a bit of silicon grease on it. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what the best answer is. Google it, there are some tips on, on the Hyperflame. What I have found is that once you do it, uh, because what happens is when you turn this, you see it springs back when it's in the top position. It's, it's a bit springy. It's almost like um, something's pulling it back. Um, now what I found was that once you've taken the valve stem out, cleaned off the excess grease and put it back, I found that that's fine for the next few days, but next time you go camping, you might need to do it again. And actually on our last trip I had to do it whilst we were actually camping, but it's so easy to do it once you've done it once. As I said, pull it off under the valve, uh, just wipe it off with a bit of tissue, maybe you want to put some silicon uh, grease back on it. I, I actually didn't put any on last time, uh, and it's been fine. So that's the negative, the, 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 the difficulty of having low flame on this particular device. So we'll now go over and talk a bit about gas. So the next big question is, how much gas do you need? I guess it's how long is a piece of string, because how many of you are you, how much you're going to use it. Uh, only you can answer that question. I can tell you for us what we've found, what we've worked out, and I can also show you a way of how you calculate how much gas you need and how much you're using, especially when it comes to the bigger ones. So with the smaller cans, you know, where we, I said you're using one every day and a half, you know, pretty quick that, you know, you just calculate how many do you need. Um, and you know, you know, pretty quick when it's finished because you just swap it over. So this particular one is uh, just under 500 grams. So uh, um, not gonna last you that long. So again, how much gas do you need? So, I've worked, we've worked out that we use um, approximately 250 grams of gas, 250 to 300, I would say, a day. Um, now, that is based on a family of four, and we obviously make tea, coffee in the morning. We even cook breakfast, and it's usually pancakes or something, so the pan's going for a while. Um, we obviously cook something in the evening. Uh, and then some days we might light it again during the day. If we stay stationary for a bit, we might do something during the day. So I would say we do use it quite a bit. So on a hard day, that could be 300 grams. On an easier day, it could be 200. So it's in that region for me. So I know that this at 500 would probably last two days if I push it. So one of these would last us two days. So... Bigger bottle, so this is a uh, three kilo gas bottle. Um, and on that sort of note, uh, this could last 12 days. So for us, talking about that consumption, three kilos of gas, 12 days. I've got a, a four kilo bottle to take us a little bit into the two week scenario. So if we're going on a short trip, maybe for five or seven days, we'll take the three kilo bottle. If we go on a 14 day trip, we'll take the four kilo bottle. So, uh, so hopefully that'll, that'll get us easily through two weeks. How do I know how much gas I've got left? So this is a little trick that I'll tell you. Now there are lots of things on the internet about, you know, um, putting water on it, cold water and all sorts of other things, but this is the most accurate way of finding out how much gas you've got left. And you need a little weighing scale. So this is a portable electronic scale. Uh, actually, I got it a long time ago for weighing suitcases. It's a bit tricky, but it does the job. So what you need to do is look at your gas bottle, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the camera, but you've obviously got some text built into here, and you're looking for the tar weight, T-A-R-E, 
and you're looking for the tar weight and the tar weight on this particular bottle is 4.46 kilos so what you need to know is the tar weight is the empty weight so that's the weight of the bottle without any gas in it so it's 4.46 kilos so what you need to do is say that when that bottle is full it will be 4.46 kilos plus the 3 kilos of gas that it's got in it so it should be 7.4 kilos in total weight if this bottle is full and now you can start calculating down so when you're camping you can weigh it so let's weigh this one and see what we come in at so it, as i said this is a little bit tricky thing to do but you'll get the gist of it so if we pull it up we can see i don't know if you can see that but that's coming in at seven just over seven kilos so that's just on seven kilos so i know it's not quite full and actually it's supposed to be full this one so clearly they didn't quite fit it full could have been done it's a bit of a cold morning so temperature might come a little bit into play but that's still a bit far out but anyway seven kilos so i've got uh i've got yeah i'd say two and a two and a half kilos left in this just a bit over 2.6 kilos maybe for me uh at 250 a day so I know, I, you know, I can work that out. That's about 10. I've probably got about 10 days out of this particular bottle. All right. So, so that's how you work it out. And then, of course, halfway through the trip, yeah, you can shake it. You can feel how much it's got in it. But if you've actually got one of these with you, you can really measure it down to the last little bit. Because once you get near the tar weight, you know it's completely empty. So certainly once I know it drops under five kilos in weight, I'm down to the last bit. And that's how you calculate gas. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Um, as I said, each family's circumstances are different. What works for me may not work for you, but these are just some things that we found. And uh, hopefully uh, they've helped you.